and prosperous Afghanistan, contributing to stability uh, and regional connectivity. It is our hope that the Afghan authorities would be responsive to the international community's expectations regarding inclusivity, respect for human rights for all Afghans, including women, and take effective actions against terrorism. For its part, the international community must be actively engaged in preventing a human humanitarian crisis. We also believe that the release of Afghanistan's financial assets would be crucial in stabilizing the economy and giving it sustainability. This is all the more important as the world's attention and resources are currently focused on the Ukrainian crisis. It is essential that the people of Afghanistan also receive the world's attention. I assured the Foreign Minister of Pakistan's continued support to foreign governments, the EU and international organizations engaged in evacuation of their personnel from Afghanistan. We have facilitated the evacuation of over 90,000 people belonging to 24 countries and international organizations as far, uh, so far in the earlier phases. The ongoing, the ongoing conflict in the Ukraine was also discussed. Pakistan has continuously emphasized the principles of the United Nations Charter, including self-determination of peoples, non-use or threat of use of force, respect for sovereignty and territorial integrity of states, and peaceful settlement of disputes. Pakistan remains concerned about the well-being of the Ukrainian people, reports of civilian casualties, Massive outflow of refugees and internally displacement of peoples are disturbing. In solidarity with the people of Ukraine, Pakistan has sent four plane loads of relief assistance, including medicine and food items. The Ukrainian conflict has shown how interlinked today's world is as ramifications of a conflict on the European continent are being felt in Pakistan in the form of rising fuel and food prices. Since the conflict started, we have been in regular contact with the leadership of Ukraine and Russia, as well as the United, uh, European Union and other European partners urging continued dialogue and diplomacy in the pursuit of peace, we once again emphasize the indispensability of the immediate secession of hostilities and constructive engagement. Pakistan fervently hopes that a solution would be found through dialogue and diplomacy at the earliest possible. We also discussed the continuing human rights violations in Indian-occupied Jammu and Kashmir, the rising tide of Islamophobia across India, and risks posed by the developments for regional as well as international peace and security. In the latest incidents, derogatory remarks made by two senior officials of the India's ruling BJP party, by the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, deeply offended the sentiments not only of Muslims in Pakistan, Muslims within India, but Muslims across the world. And I emphasize that sustainable peace in South Asia remains contingent upon the peaceful resolution of the Jammu and Kashmir dispute in accordance with the relevant UNSC resolutions and the wishes of the Kashmiri people. Pakistan has close cooperations with Germany in a number of areas, and we desire to expand it further to, uh, to other areas of mutual benefit of our two countries. I conclude by thanking the Foreign Minister for her visit, and I look forward to continuing to work with her towards regional peace and for further deepening our bilateral ties. I will now give the floor to the Foreign Minister of Germany. Thank you very much, uh, ladies and gentlemen, Excellency, dear colleague. Thank you very much for the friendly and warm welcome here in Islamabad. We are meeting today in a time of multiple crises. The Taliban, as you have uh, mentioned, have brought incredible suffering and hunger to the people in Afghanistan. But the crisis has consequences far beyond its borders 
and no country has felt the impact more severely than your country, than Pakistan. Furthermore, Russia's invasion of Ukraine is not only threatening the foundations of our international order, Russia's restriction on wheat exports and its siege of Ukrainian ports have sent food prices skyrocketing. Few countries import more wheat from both Russia and Ukraine than Pakistan. And the climate crisis is the biggest threat and the greatest challenge for humanity as a whole in the 21st century. And it is affecting our countries already. These crises mutually reinforce each other and therefore we cannot deal with them separately. But we must tackle them all at the same time. We have to work together and support each other and this is also why I'm here today. Today we discussed at length the situation in Afghanistan. Over the last years and decades, millions of people fled Afghanistan in search for a better and safer life. Successive governments and the Pakistani people have shown a big heart by selflessly welcoming these people inside your borders and by providing them with food, shelter and a chance for a better future. I know that this was not always easy. It is an enormous task that Pakistan is shouldering on behalf of the whole international community. And it deserves our solidarity and support. I came here today to tell you we see your engagement and Germany remains committed to continuing our support for Pakistani host communities along with people who had to flee Afghanistan. We want to work together with your government, the Pakistani people and our international partners to improve their living conditions and provide access to education and decent health care. When we look across the border, the situation is dire and as you have mentioned, the Taliban are leading the country into a downfall. Parents do not know how to feed their children. Girls are deprived of their right to education. Women are almost excluded from participation in public life. Dissenting voices are brutally suppressed. The economy is grinding to a halt. The international community must stand united and together tell the Taliban loud and clear, you are heading in the wrong direction. As long as they go down this path, there's no room for normalization and even less for recognition of the Taliban as the legitimate rulers of the country. At the same time, we will not forget and we will not abandon the people of Afghanistan. It is not the fault of the people that the Taliban government overthrew the government and since then have tightened their grip on the Afghan society. We will continue to provide humanitarian aid and support the people who need it the most, especially women and girls who suffer more than anyone else under the Taliban's rule. And there's another important personal concern to me. Afghans who have worked for German institutions or committed themselves to the democratic cause and human rights deserve our protection. Pakistan has been our closest and most reliable partner in this regard. Through our close cooperation over the last months, more than 14,000 Afghans who are particularly at risk could travel via Pakistan to Germany to start a new life in safety and without fear. So most of all, I'm here to say thank you. Thank you to Pakistan, thank you to the Pakistani people. We are really grateful for all the support you have given us. I very much hope that we will continue our successful cooperation and find ways to help those still remaining in their difficult situation. These past months have shown how much we can achieve when we work 
together and I hope we can apply this to other areas and deepen and strengthen our bilateral relations. As I said in the beginning, we cannot deal with the different crises separately. They are interlinked and we have to work together. Russia's war of aggression sets a dangerous precedent, not only for Europe, but for the whole world. Our world will be a much more dangerous place if the law of the strongest applies, and not international law. Therefore, we all must stand by Ukraine and defend its territorial integrity and sovereignty with words and actions. When it comes to the climate crisis, we are all living in the same house and the roof is already on fire. We are running out of time and have now to act. Both of our still relatively new governments have made this topic a priority. And I hope that Pakistan as G77 chair will participate at the Petersburg Climate Dialogue, which we are co-hosting with Egypt in July in Berlin. Last year, Germany and Pakistan established a joint climate and energy partnership. We want to build on this partnership, move forward with the energy transition, and lift our bilateral climate cooperation to the next level. We also discussed opportunities for increased trade and investment between our countries, particularly in the field of renewable energy. I'm convinced that successful economic integration depends on common values and standards. That is why, with regard to EU trade preferences, full implementation of human rights commitments is crucial. I will also have the opportunity to discuss this with civil society representatives later today. Experience shows in your country, in my country, that women's rights are an important indicator for the state of human rights and for well-being in a society as a whole. That is why I'm looking forward to visiting a police station focused on combating gender-based violence tomorrow. Dear colleague, excellencies, faced with multiple crises, we only have a fighting chance if we exchange ideas discuss openly and frank and cooperate closely. I'm optimistic that our meeting today has laid the groundwork for our successful cooperation in the future and thank you again for the warm welcome here in Islamabad. Thank you. Thank you, foreign ministers. The ministers would have time to take a couple of questions. I propose to take questions alternatively from our colleagues from Germany and Pakistan. And uh, let me start by giving the question to a gentleman on the right. Please introduce yourself and also to whom you are addressing the question. Yeah, my name is uh, Jörg Lang from the German Press Agency, DPA. And the first question goes to Ms. Baerbock. Uh, what can be done to help the people of Afghanistan uh, while increasing pressure on Taliban at the same time? And the second question to Mr. Sadari. Al-Qaeda uh, can once again operate from Afghanistan. So what can Pakistan do about it to fight uh, the terrorism in Afghanistan? Thank you. Thanks for your question. It is crucial that the Taliban hear the same message from all of us. And that's uh, why we discussed the situation in Afghanistan very extensively. We are facing a humanitarian disaster, and this is also why we, both countries, continue to provide humanitarian aid, because we cannot let people starve. But anything else above humanitarian aid must be strictly conditionalized. We see, in my point of view, that the Taliban are heading towards the wrong direction. And therefore, it is also crucial that economic supports need to be conditionalized with regard to the basic rights of the people. But this is also part of foreign policy. We have to be very honest. Our influence on what happens inside Afghanistan is very limited. 
it depends on the Taliban making rational choices in their own economic interest and that is not what they are doing right now and therefore we are supporting the people of Afghanistan with humanitarian relief and uh, bringing out those who are endangered by the life. Um, I'm going to address all three of your questions because I think it um, highlights sort of the main expectations from Pakistan and the international community uh, from Afghanistan. Uh, one is dealing with the humanitarian economic crisis and then as you said terrorist ac activity uh, from Afghanistan vis-a-vis -vis Al Qaeda. Uh, we have in Pakistan been facing the brunt uh, of uh, terrorism and extremism uh, over the past many decades and so have of course the people of Afghanistan. It is in our interest and in the world's interest that there is a peaceful and stable Afghanistan that does not uh, have its soil used for terrorist activities uh, within the international, uh, within the region or anywhere else in the world. Uh, there are questions as far as the capacity of the new regime to tackle this problem and it is important for us to engage with them for us to engage with them as far as our security concerns are concerned or terrorist activity from any group impacting uh, any uh, country is concerned but what I must emphasize is that Pakistan is not only a victim of terrorism I am a victim of terrorism and I am a victim of terrorism and terrorist groups that operated in my country and operated in another country. But when I plead the case for humanitarian assistance uh, for Afghanistan, when I, uh, for the people of Afghanistan, or when I plead the case of uh, us all working together to try and ensure that we halt the complete and utter collapse of the uh, economy in Afghanistan, that is in spite of or regardless of my views or whoever else's view, anybody else's views vis-a-vis -vis the regime uh, that is imposed uh, in Afghanistan at the moment. It is because we're particularly concerned about the consequences of a humanitarian 